Hello. Thought I'd give you some context here for a project that I've been working on. I think it's rather interesting. I've heard, had a couple people uh, chime in when I gave them a basic idea and expressed there was some interest in the in the basic concepts involved. So uh, I thought I'd just go over it. Um, well, I have a lot of these uh, ESP8266 uh, chips. Um, well, I, I actually have the Node MCU board, which uh, has the ESP8266 chip on it with other um, components um, that enable nice serialization uh, communication back and forth uh, to a computer. Uh, has uh, the Wi-Fi capability that the ESP8266 is uh, known for, uh, being the most affordable uh, uh, in its category in terms of kind of like a IOT device for um, just doing simple Wi-Fi applications and uh, what I've decided to do is since I've recently um, acquired a uh, DJI Tello uh, quadcopter simple drone uh, that I'll be using with uh, the Girls Who Code Club at our school um, since I recently acquired this drone, I thought I would start to plan a series of exercises, units if you will, around the use of the drone um, that can kind of build people's uh, familiarity uh, with the uh, hardware programming, uh, with network uh, programming, and with just coding in general, uh, as well as some UI and you know web development stuff. Um, uh, dealing with kind of front-end application stuff, web front-end, and then also some server-side kind of uh, application um, where we're going to have uh, pretty much a, a web server relaying some information uh, back and forth um, between a, um, a ESP8266 and the uh, drone uh, that is going to be getting some uh, information from it. Now, in maintaining a, like a Wi-Fi connection and UDP um, connection at the same time, um, and kind of checking to see if those connections are stable, um, that could be an issue if I was dealing with sockets. Um, so I'm not going to deal with sockets at all. I'm basically, I'm basically just going to be dealing with either sending UDP packets um, to the drone uh, via the ESP8266, or I will be sending um, a simple uh, HTTP uh, packets, polling, kind of just pull request, uh, if you will, like a GET request to the um, server or web server that we'll have set up um, that will be you know just just hosted a glitch basically um, and we'll use that to be the intermediary uh, between client applications um, so that this can be controlled from anywhere ultimately I would like to set it up so we have um, a drone that can be fly flown excuse me uh, within the context of like my classroom, I have it in like a secure area in the classroom and I have like another camera on it. I'm not to this point yet, but I would have like another camera on the drone uh, and then um, you'd be able to uh, pretty much control the drone over the internet. Um, and it would just be in my like classroom at school. Um, of course, I would have uh, students be able to uh, connect and and do it from within the connect from within the classroom as well. Needless to say, we'll still uh, take the extra hops and go through the um, the glitch server. So uh, this is a uh, long story short. I'm doing some preliminary tests right here. I'm just getting the UDP server set up. Um, so the UDP server is being set up now on the ESP8266. If you've never heard of UDP, UDP is, uh, I think it stands for Universal Datagram uh, Packet. Um, and it is a lower level protocol for communicating um, 
uh, over the internet. Uh, okay, so uh, TCP IP, TCP over IP is uh, the protocol that is uh, that HTTP and HTTPS are built upon. Um, UDP doesn't have a lot of the kind of uh, complexity that TCP has. Uh, UDP is over IP as well, but UDP doesn't guarantee, for example, that your packets will ever get delivered. It doesn't give, doesn't give you any um, real um, guarantee. It doesn't give you any guarantee of ordering of the packets or anything as well. Um, so that comes uh, that's a cost that you pay, but the benefit you get is you can just throw the packets out there and they'll arrive uh, not necessarily faster, um, but you have to do a lot of less, uh, a lot less computation on uh, at the network level and it kind of uh, getting them out there and getting them in. So that's a, a benefit of them. Uh, so what you see right here on the screen right now is just a little test sketch that's in any Arduino IDE on the left hand side over here I have the UDP uh, kind of default uh, practice sketch for the ESP8266 node MCU board uh, and it just basically creates a connection uh, Wi-Fi connection and it, what it does after it connects to Wi-Fi to the local uh, Wi-Fi connection, it starts to listen in this loop for uh, UDP uh, packets coming in, uh, and then right now it's just kind of uh, writing them uh, serial uh, to the serial uh, output, and you can see over here um, some output. If I type in, for example, 444 here, you can see it gets acknowledged and it shows up here 444. If I say type over here, uh, testing. And then you can see um, up here in the serial output, it says 444. So what exactly is happening right here? Um, so I'm typing in the bottom right, I'm typing into my console on this uh, laptop. And my laptop is connected to the local network. Um, and what you see over here is the serial connection. Uh, this is basically getting output from the um, connected ESP8266, which is also connected to the local network. Uh, and what I'm doing down here in this particular um, terminal, uh, I have, is I'm just, a, I have a session right here, a netcat session that I started, which is basically a simple um, uh, UDP uh, session that I started uh, between uh, this terminal instance uh, and the um, ESP8266. So that's uh, being established right here. Here's the local IP for the uh, ESP8266, and this is the port that the ESP8266 is listening for. Uh, uh, listening on, I should say, uh, for UDP packets. And here's the flag right here that, for Netcat that specifies that we're um, do, uh, creating a, a UDP session basically and then these are just my messages that I sent um, and then uh, over here we're getting an acknowledged which is basically uh, what this sketch is sending back if it does get the, the message so if I send another message right here I say um, nice job send that over there it shows up here the ESP8266 received it over that particular port. You can see over here, um, it received a packet of size nine. So the size of the packet is specified uh, uh, in, in terms of uh, the bytes. Uh, and we're looking at like a, a, a byte per character. And since I had sent nice job right there, uh, basically have nine uh, bytes of information, including the space in between them. Um, and then um, over here, we have um, this particular um, output that was saying that this is the um, listening port basically uh, that was received on. It's coming from here. This is the originator. This is where I was sending it from in uh, my terminal. 
and then down here um, right after this particular um, message uh, was replied it actually was freeing some of the the memory um, uh, and the uh, ESP8266 node MCU that I have has um, flash memory on board has I think four megabytes of it and then over here it's just like if you look over here it's like freeing the um, freeing the heat completely right there um, so if you consider what you know why it might be doing right there it's freeing the entire uh, the maximum um, size of, of that heap that flash memory that's on the ESP8266 every time something is sent now you can do more memory management uh, this is just a default sketch but you can do all kind of other fancy things with optimization and, and control uh, of uh, structuring of the memory uh, on these uh, devices um, so uh, this is just the most basic of the sketches when it comes to creating this um, UDP um, connection between um, ESP8266 and some type of uh, you know other um, device. In our case, um, the other device that we're going to be dealing with, uh, communicating with over UDP, is going to be a Tello. Um, besides the ESP8266, is going to be a Tello drone, which has a UDP. Um, server on it that fires up right once the drone uh, is on um, and we're going to be able to use the uh, API uh, documentation and establishing a, a nice uh, program uh, our own custom program uh, our own custom sketch to kind of communicate uh, to the drone and at the same time uh, relay uh, control information to the drone and relay information from the drone to uh, other people, um, other clients uh, via a web server um, where this sketch will also be sending out um, polling messages every so often. Um, it will pull the, um, pull the web server to see if it's needed. Um, and what we could also do is we could also even set timeouts and other things with this ESP8266 to get fancier. Um, we could even on the Node MCU, you can even uh, sometimes uh, on these hardware devices, these little single board, you can put them in a lower um, kind of uh, power state where they can run uh, just running a really, really small bit of logic, just kind of checking to see if there's some type of interrupt or some, some type of event that's saying that you should power up fully. Um, so there's a lot of other uh, cool things that we could do to kind of remotely deploy systems like uh, similar to this. But I'm just gonna pretty much uh, keep it really simple and just communicate from the server, uh, from the web server, whatever the client wants. Uh, in terms of commands uh, to the drone and I'm just going to relay them um, to the uh, drone uh, by the polling request from the ESP8266. That keeps this really secure. I don't have to open up any uh, ports, uh, local ports uh, into the local network. Um, all the information is guaranteed, uh, has all the guarantees of the um, the TCP IP, uh, you know, HTTP requests that will be made um, from the ESP8266 to the web server. So there's no uh, special router configuration and uh, so forth, uh, like IP tables or, you know, special kinds of um, network setup to do. Um, so this is just the beginning of what I'm doing. If you're interested in a project like this, uh, working with, uh, it doesn't have to be a necessarily a, a telodrome, but anything where you're kind of doing an intermediary kind of um, communication between a, a web server and um, ESP8266 or possibly a ESP32 device, feel free to re reach out uh, to me via the channel, via comments, uh, and maybe we can collaborate on a project. Um, I will be digging into this and posting more updates in the future. Just thought I'd let you know uh, what I'm up to right here in case somebody out there uh, finds something interesting about this. Take care.